Hey everyone, I'm Eric. This is my wife, Julie. We are The Blended Life, and today... Today we're going to give you 10 tips and a bonus... A bonus tip. ...on how to deal with a high-conflict ex or co-parent. It's good stuff. You won't want to miss it. Hey, you guys, welcome back to another episode of Blended Life. Yeah, hey guys, today we are going to talk about 10 tips for... Actually, it's 11, isn't it? Well, no, I took the the 11 will be like a bonus. A bonus 11? A bonus 11. Like and Ocean really, 11? Yeah, so 10 tips for co-parenting with an with specifically high conflict co-parent okay and i feel like it's always the h um what is the hashtag hc high conflict bm bio mom yeah i remember i used to get really confused about those and now i'm like all I the think acronyms I know, and, yeah but i don't know them like how some people know them it's mm -hmm. one of those i have to like think about what it actually is so but i'm like where's like shout out to the high conflict bio dads those exist <laughs> It's always, we're giving them a shout out. <laughs> like we're, we're acknowledging all of you right now. I'm acknowledging that that also exists For because sure. I feel like it's For always sure. the women who are you know pinned as being crazy and all this. But uh, um, have you met yourselves? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I think we're more emotional, but I do think that yeah. I know for a fact there's high conflict by oh, dads. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I've known some in my time. So do anyways. you know any currently? Not currently. I do. Do you? <laughs> I'm just curious if you do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. Let's play the shocking game again. You want to? If you guys ever, um, or if you're just joining us, you need to go back to what was it, episode uh, two or three? Two, I think it was, I think, I don't know. It was dating with children. It's the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen ever. You guys got to go back. We used to play games. Maybe you should bring that back. Bring games back? You're giving me the, you told me to stop playing games. <laughs> well, I they were dumb, but the, well, if oh. it happens, what happened? I'm okay. all for it. All right. We could have like a jackass section of just you doing things. I, I thought that's what our blended life raw was. I just film you doing things and that's kind of like mm. our. Yeah. Blended life raw. If you guys get on. You know, tell them about Blended Life Raw real quick. Blended Life Raw is our Patreon and Buy Me a Coffee supporters special um, Instagram account that we get a little more raw on Blended Life. And it's a lot of our BTS and um, just fun stuff. We've we've uh, we've already started just just doing things that you wouldn't normally see on our normal Blended Life accounts. And it's just yeah. a little perk to, yeah. you know, just show a little bit of insight into be the behind the scenes of our lives and our show. Yeah. And my hope is to talk about things that we can't air publicly. Ooh. Yeah, because there's a lot of things that we are what contrary to some popular belief. Yeah. We hold back a lot because we do have exes, we do have children and we do realize this is a public forum. So we do not So you got to you got to pay for the goods. Yeah. <laughs> But there's a lot to say, you know, but I am, you know, we both are very respectful of 100%. our situation and even also on, don't want to cause problems. Yeah. Even on ourselves. Raw, I feel like we'll be respectful. We're just, we're, we'll, but we'll be real about it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a shit talker. I don't feel like you're a shit talker. Like we're just real about things. Yeah. And just because we're talking about it or talking about something doesn't yeah. mean that. It's drama induced, right? Yeah. Well, and I feel like Blended Life Raw, what's really great about it is people will get to see our struggles. <laughs> because they got to see my struggles this morning. <laughs> I think that people don't, I mean, I, I don't know how good we, we probably don't come off very good, to be honest. I was walking through the house with a plate of tacos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and a rock star. But it's really a place where you can see what we struggle with. We don't often bring it up because it affects other people and it's not, mm -hmm. you know, we're not trying to cause drama not for ourselves, all. for our kids, um, and not wanting to 
damage reputations. Like that's not our goal, but it's a place where we can talk and we can um, let you guys more in on what we actually struggle with. Well, and it's a little bit more of a committed one-on-one space with us. So if someone's involved in our blended life raw and they're a Patreon or a buy me a coffee, if they're, if you guys are a supporter, um, it's almost a guaranteed uh, one-on-one way to connect with us. You know, we, we try to connect with everyone, but in our daily crazy lives, sometimes that gets pushed aside. Now, if you're on, that side of it and you're one of our supporters like we definitely take the time to make sure that we're it, connecting we're with connecting 100 yeah, and, and giving just, you something and, and a we little... appreciate it and you know what i feel like everyone's a supporter so therefore we try to connect with everyone because you guys just listening to the show you guys watching the show you guys being a part of this it's very important to us and you guys truly are what make this this go this is just a passion project for julie and i and it's turned out to actually be i feel a lot more i feel like it's been very impactful and people Mm -hmm. have written in and been a part of the show and they have helped impact um you know you've got people in the facebook group um it's turning into a community and that's really really neat to see because at first this was just a dream that has turned into something and i just want to say thank you to all of you for listening for watching for being a part of our blended life community Um, it just, it's bringing awareness to blended families. And I think that is just, that's why we're here. It's very important to us. So, yeah. And just knowing that you aren't alone in the struggle, it's really, really difficult. Yeah. And, um, anyway, well, let's jump into, uh, and also if you guys, well, also if you guys are interested in becoming a blended life supporter and going further, buy me a coffee, um, Patreon, Patreon, they're all linked in, in our descriptions and, um, Again, we just thank all of you. So Yeah. Okay, thanks. now you can all go. Right. <laughs> well, let's talk about co-parenting with a high-conflict ex. Yeah. And some tips around that. Yeah. Yeah. So this isn't the this isn't a tip, but also know when you're dealing with anyone who's high-conflict, whether it is in co-parenting or at work, right, the number one rule is keep it on subject. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that goes without saying. So always keep it about the kids. Mm-hmm. So that's not really a tip because I feel like that's something that goes without saying. Is that, is that the bonus tip? No. No? Okay, no. good. I'm like, that's weak. That's weak. No, okay, I have good. a much better one. Okay, Thank good. You. I, I believe in you. All right. So the Julie, first, I trust. Oh, gosh. Um, the first thing, obviously, is boundaries. Uh, you know, I used to have one of those bracelets, right? WWJD. What would Julie do? And it reminded me all the time, <laughs> like, just to put my faith in Julie. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Don't like, we're going to get negative reviews because of that. <laughs> we're good. People are like, turn off podcast. <laughs> um, so the first thing I want to talk about, which is it, it's talked about a lot for a reason is boundaries. And what do boundaries look like specifically with co-parenting with a high conflict, um, you know, co-parent, it looks like having a plan before you start a conversation. So knowing um, when you are going to end communication. So if things go off the rails and you start feeling super emotional or you're getting baited or you feel like the conversation has no more value, you can say goodbye. Goodbye, like the old... uh, I gotta go. The old Windows sign off. Thanks for chatting. The Windows? No, it was uh, AOL. Goodbye. (laughs) Wish I had the soundbite. Yeah. So boundaries look like that. Boundaries also look like maybe you have to discern how you are going to communicate with your ex. Maybe it is in writing only. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is in person only. Maybe it is on the phone only. Maybe it's a combination, but creating a boundary of what communication looks like. How are you willing to engage with it? Who is, who are you willing to engage your X with in your well, and family. I think that if you draw it as a boundary and it actually becomes a boundary, you mm-hmm. need to notify your ex. Maybe in in <laughs> in said way, if it's in writing, like you know, it, uh, via text or email, you need to notify your ex and be like, "Look, this is the only way mm-hmm. I will I will communicate or acknowledge mm-hmm. what's going on." You know, unless emergency, yeah. you know, so the kid has a you know an accident, something major happens. Like obviously, like we need to. We need to loosen up for stuff like that when yeah. it's an emergency. Um, but notification, I feel, is important. 
communication's always a good thing. <laughs> it's hard though I with see. a high conflict ex. You might take that as a like a sign to like a battle cry. Yeah, maybe. Like it's on. Wow. So it doesn't really matter what the ex does as long as you're sticking to your boundaries. Another boundary might look like um, understanding what's off limits as far as a topic. Um, you know, is your relationship with your spouse up for discussion with your ex? Wait, like my ex is like, hey, we're going to talk about your current spouse? Like if the ex wants to ask questions about your spouse or your marriage. If yes. the ex Unicorns wants... Unicorns and rainbow farts. I'd be like, it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> it's the best thing since well, fried hot dogs. Well, what if the ex wants to ask questions about kids that aren't theirs? Like... If my ex was asking questions about your son, I feel like that's not really up for discussion. Well, because it's none of their business at the end of the day. And it might be used for evil. Right. You know, like I, a lot of high Whoa. conflict a lot of high conflict people will take seemingly meaning like by what is it? Um not um benign. <laughs> oh, that's benign. the word. Yeah. Binary wasn't the right uh, okay. word. Benign information and turn it into a piece of gossip, right? Or turn it into a lie, or whatever. So I feel you like have high, to be really high conflict, gossipy people can turn anything right. into anything. So you have to really understand what's off limits to talk about, right? In laws, your current spouse, kids in the household that aren't biologically the exes. These are things that you can create boundaries around to really help limit contact and help limit your. A good one I feel like a lot of people can get caught up on, too, mm -hmm. um, especially when co-parenting, mm -hmm. is finances and financial things. Because maybe someone can't afford something or maybe someone got a raise at their job. or Those are little things that can be used, manipulative things that can be used as plus or minuses, depending on how yeah. they are used. So I think finances are something that need to be very like very right. kept to your heart and here's the thing if you can't afford something that the ex is like you have to pay for this and you're like i can't afford it you can say no like i can't afford it period you don't have to go into why you can't afford explaining it. further or if you can like yeah sure i can pay for this you don't have to go on and be like well my husband got a raise and and i took on a second job like you don't have to give them any more than a yes or no answer and then if it needs to be i mean truly high conflict people things have to be worked out in like mediation or through attorneys and things like that because it's not safe sometimes to share information so you know i think a lot of people talk about boundaries and we all really understand like we should have boundaries but i think it's really useful to sit down and think about your high conflict ex and write a list of boundaries for yourself as far as like time limit if conversation. How am I going to communicate? What topics are off limits? Like if you don't know, you won't hold to it. Well, the other thing that you could do too is make it while you're making this list, put the kids, you know, make your start making your list, but put the word kids next to it. Mm -hmm. And anything that you put down as a boundary or an off limits, mm -hmm. make sure you can't tie, make sure, make sure everything that you do within it ties to the kids. If you're going to have a subject, you're going to have or a conversation or something, make sure that it ties to the kids. If this is something that the kids have no, not a say in, but they have no part of, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to do with the kids, mm -hmm. make it a boundary. You know, if, yeah. if it's, if it's not about the kids, it's not about the current, um, co-parenting situation, get rid of it. Make it a boundary. It's not about the kids. So our work life, not about the kids. Our uh, marriage life, it's not about the kids. You know, our sex life, not about the kids. <laughs> so, you know Hopefully. what I mean? Hopefully. <laughs> well, and I think, too, that something to be beware of, of high conflict exes, where, you know, if they're gaslighting or manipulating, mm -hmm. then you have to really understand that small talk probably isn't safe. Mm -hmm. So, because what happens a lot is that everyone wants to get along. Like we have a, we have this inner, inner person that really wants things to be okay, that really wants the comfort, that really is seeking um, resolution and resolve and peace. You know, we all are seeking that. And so I think what happens is that you enter in small talk and you're hopeful. 
Mm. Oh my gosh, we mm. can have small talk. This is great. And then that might lead into discussing something that's an, because now you're feeling a little bit safe. You're full of hope and you forget who you're talking to. Right. You forget who this person genuinely is. Your high conflict ex, because now you're filled with like hope and like, Oh, I really want this to go well. And Oh gosh, this is really great. And then what ends up happening is you start discussing things that are off your boundary list, you know, yeah. and because it feels safe. And what happens often is the cycle is in that moment, it might be okay, but it comes back around Months, later yeah. and bites you in the butt. And so if this is a pattern, you can really help yourself by maybe you have your notebook out until your mind is trained not to go there. But you need to really have a plan for yourself. You need to have a boundary list and what that looks like and what you feel good about so that you can hold people to it. And listen, if things start crossing your boundaries, there's no law that says you have to engage or stay on the phone. You can say, I have to go and hang up. There is no law you that do, says... You could do the wind. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going through a tunnel. It's getting I'm losing. <laughs> I go. can't hear you. What? Yeah, those are topics for today. Uh, but yeah, Sorry. I mean, can't you can't have a podcast today. Really, <laughs> ruin the topics. But another boundary to keep in mind is give yourself an out. No matter if you are conversing in person or on the phone, you know, give yourself an out. Meaning, give yourself permission to leave the conversation the minute you feel something's going astray or wrong. And really, if you're keeping to your boundaries, conversations to be sh- should be super short Yeah. with a high conflict. Now, not all exes are like this, but if you're dealing with someone who creates issues and is high conflict, this is really good advice. So boundaries, this number one. Good advice. I like yeah. it. All right. Number two. Oh, and you know what? Oh. When you have boundaries, tell your spouse so that they can help you stick to them. And you're not going to like, oh, like that at first. like accountability. Yeah. Yeah. If you have boundaries with anything, it's super important to have accountability. So your kids probably aren't the appropriate person to share those with. Your spouse would be no, if because you what have happens- like a mom or a sister. If you have someone in your life who is not in the immediate relationship, but like you can share your list with, you're more likely to follow through with boundaries if you're – sharing them with someone and I don't feel like well you just touched on like your kids don't share them with your kids or I don't feel like sharing boundaries and stuff like that with your are with your kids is an appropriate thing the reason being well probably in most cases the the reason being is they then see the other parent as a flawed parent and they start looking for issues and reasons and they start they start analyzing. They start realizing that yeah. there's a problem there. And the goal is not to get our kids to dislike the other parent, although that's what a lot of people want. They really want our kids to choose sides. At the end of the day, we want our kids to be in two loving homes without the arguments, without the fights, and yeah. by eliminating the arguments and fights with this high-conflict ex-bio parent, then it uh, it just makes things better. So not drawing our kids into this, I feel is very important. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't, your kids aren't your friends. You know, you shouldn't share with them the most intimate details of your heart. You're leading your kids. You're not partnering with your kids. And that's something that a lot of people get really angry about when we talk about, but. Yeah, but if you're on the (laughs) other side, you get really jealous. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Number two, don't take the drama bait. So here's the thing, like we're human, we might have great boundaries in place, but it's really hard when you're triggered. (laughs) Don't you feel? It's really hard when you're triggered. To not take the bait, to not engage in a way you're Does this ever happen to you, Julie? No. (laughs) Um... It's better. It's a journey. It's, it's a, because a journey. here's the deal. Like all these are really good in theory. Right. Putting them into practice is really retraining your brain. 100%. Yeah. So it takes practice and it is a journey and even a little bit better is still a little bit better. So maybe when my kids are 30, it'll be fine. But do you just like set this alarm to go off every time we podcast to be here now? Yeah. It goes it's off every day at noon. We don't podcast every day at noon. It's only like it's reminding you to be present. (laughs) So okay, so don't take the drama bait. If you're being baited or you're being triggered, 
really good advice is to either one, leave the conversation. But if you haven't finished talking about what you need to talk about, say you're on the phone for a specific reason, it is, it is school, it is medical stuff, and you have to hash it out, but you're being baited. So what you can do is redirect the conversation back to topic. So don't acknowledge, don't engage in what is being brought forth to bait you or trigger you. Just say, ah, oh, nevertheless, you know, m- our daughter has to have a filling. Are you good with that? Like, no matter what is said, you can always redirect, like, nevertheless, or, you know, ask a question, make, you know, redirect back. And I think that's a really good tip for um, when you're dealing with people and you have to, right? Like, some things you have to co parent. And um, so, yeah, it, getting out of co parenting or pretending that co parenting doesn't exist yeah. is only going to be a detriment to your kids and, the relationship as a whole. I mean, not that you want to see your ex as having a relationship, but at the end of the day, we need to have some sort of communication. It's it's going to be more difficult for people not to co-parent than yeah. it is for them to learn how to co-parent. That's right. Becoming a, co- a, a good at co-parenting takes time. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit of work, but once it's, once it's going – it's pretty and it's easy. Never perfect, right? No, and it's not in it in it actually once it becomes a normal thing, mm-hmm. it's not that big of a burden like at at the very beginning it is such well, a pain. And I don't want to hyper like also with both of our co-parenting relationships with our exes, yeah. it goes like this. Oh, 100%. It's got its ups, it's got its downs, it's so got its So you think highs. everything's really great. It's got its extreme lows. <laughs> right. You think things are going great and then shit hits the fan and it's really not great again. Right. And then you get back to like, okay, things are all right and we can communicate and then things are bad. And it's like, it's bipolar whiplash, you know, and that is both of our co-parenting cycles. For sure. And it's just because we're imperfect humans. We all deal with things that are really hard. Trying, you know, you care about few things more than your children in this world. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a heightened topic anyway when you're talking about your children to anyone, especially with your ex who you have like, history with or whatever or you may agree or disagree with how to handle the most important most important little children in your life you know so give yourself grace and understand that even though it might be good if it goes bad it doesn't mean you're failing it just means everyone's human and redirect and start again you're really good about that you're really good about starting again thank you clean slate every day is a new day and I think that's a really good perspective to have that's a little bonus tip that's not in there is it every Thanks. conversation can be a new conversation oh for a sure new opportunity. It, ha- it has to be because yeah. if you continue to drag on the old stuff through the mud it's just gonna turn into a giant mud puddle yeah okay number three okay tone matters oh yeah 100 percent. so i'm <laughs> we were discussing this last night about tone and i'm like because one of my new favorite things that actually a listener wrote in about was gray gray rocking yeah is that what it is yeah well it, i was like stone was... gray stone or i was <laughs> but it's called gray rocking and i'm like this is the most brilliant Someone, thing yeah, they, uh, i've a few, ever a heard few of our a few of our listeners explained it to us yeah on... so you just be the most boring person you could ever be to your ex <laughs> so funny like a gray rock like a like gray rock like in. you just give nothing take nothing you know, like you, yeah. there's nothing You're to attach the, to. The gray rock of our relationship. <laughs> <love>. I am <laughs> just kidding. So gray rocking is a good. It, you know, I mean, if you can't fake happy, because <laughs> Eric's Eric's thing was like when we were discussing tone matters. He's like, kill him with kindness, and he does this. I do this. He's so kind and happy, and ah! <laughs> and I'm like, I can't do that. Like, if I don't feel that, it doesn't, it's not happening. But I can gray rock all day. I'm all about yeah. it. Oh, I'm very aware. Thank you. So I think you have to find what works for you. But kill him with kindness is a great attitude to bring to a high conflict co-parenting situation. Just be kind. Be open. Um, don't take the bait. You know, extend grace. That's And then if you can't do that because you feel like you're like me and that's just you know, if I don't feel that towards someone to have to portray, that's really difficult. I'd be a horrible politician. Um, then yeah, gray rock, player. like don't don't be mean, don't be kind. Like just 
exist. Just be boring. Barely. Barely. Barely exist. Barely exist. And then you have nothing for them to attach to or latch on to or, you know what I mean? So attitude matters. What tone you bring to the conversation with a high conflict bio, parent, co-parent matters. Number four, it's really important that you stay independent. And what I mean by this is we get so wrapped up in letting our exes or you can get wrapped up with a high conflict ex um, and attach to how they feel you absorb. Right. And so you take on as an empath their negativity into yourself or you're reliant on them to make decisions because sometimes you're just gaslighted into thinking you're a bad mom, you're a crazy mom or dad. How many people you have, have no ever idea how to like you have no idea how to parent. A lot of people get shamed by their ex or I feel like most people have dealt with that. You yeah. Know? It's like if you have had any type of communication with your ex throughout this situation. Yeah. You have gotten this. You you've know? experienced you've that. experienced or you have ex- or you've experienced being the one talking about maybe not directly to your ex, but mm-hmm. talking about your ex is like they have no idea. But the funny thing is like we all think about it, it's like we all decided to have for the most part decided to have children with these people. Like <laughs> shame on us. <laughs> we thought it was a really good idea. But here's the thing. What's the saying? Young, dumb, and stupid? (laughs) It's not the saying. Did that only go for me? (laughs) Young, dumb, and full of. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah. That's the saying. (laughs) But but, um, here's the deal. When you are reliant on your opinion of yourself and your parenting skills and what's right or wrong, If you're so reliant on your ex, you're always looking to your ex, you're taking on your ex's opinions of you, you're not an independently thinking person, right? You are still super attached to your ex. And that gives them a lot of power, and they know that, and they like it. And so the high conflict side of things always rears its ugly head because it's a way of controlling you. And so what I would say is you need to find independence from your ex. Become confident. And maybe that's a journey you need to go on. Hit me up. I'm a coach. I can help you with this. But being confident in your abilities to make good decisions for your family and your kids and yourself, that independence and that confidence will totally change how you show up with a high-conflict X and what boundaries like it changes everything it transforms how they're able to talk to you and treat you they can't treat you um like a minion like dirt beneath their shoe if you're walking tall and a confident independent person it just won't happen they're not able to well especially if you if there's yeah if there's no dependence on them whatsoever you've got all your ducks in a row and you're just not dealing with with them other than w- for the kids, you know, and you're making you're making calls with them. They're not telling you what's going on. You're not telling them what's going on. You're co-parenting. You're having a conversation. You're figuring it out. It's going to go so much easier and so much further. Yeah, absolutely. Um, number five, when you're dealing with a high conflict co-parent is protect your spouse and your kids because what oftentimes happens is that the dealings with the high conflict co-parent it wiggles its way into your marriage or into your relationship with your children because either the children become involved um or you know if you're dealing with a high if you have a high conflict ex don't let your spouse deal with them like don't right yeah i, I like get, why I get, would you do that well i get torn between this sometimes because oh, i feel like well, it's one of those things like I feel like if I deal with high conflict stuff, which I do sometimes, we co-parent pretty well for the most part, but sometimes there's there's some high conflict issues that arise. No. And I feel like if that comes up that uh, then it's like do I burden you with it? You oh, know, I'm I- not talking about I'm just saying like if my ex was high conflict, 
And I'm like, you have to deal with him. Uh, oh, or I'm bringing oh, you, you into I the see. conversation. Okay, okay so I'm Like, I'm bringing people into our high-conflict drama. So you're bringing a third wheel onto the bicycle. Yeah, like, why am I going to... Because a lot of people pass it off to their spouse or want their spouse present. or And what that does is it just creates bigger issues yeah. because then your spouse is like, you should handle it this way and you're already having a hard time or the spouse. Now, like if you have a high conflict ex, you probably don't like them. And it's harder when your spouse doesn't like them too, because mm -hmm. you have to deal with them. You can't just peace out and never see them or talk to them again. They're your children's kids. Right. So the more you can kind of buffer and protect I think your spouse and your kids from your high conflict situation is an easier time for your blended family in your home mm -hmm. because your stuff is already hard enough to deal with, you know, the relationship, the pain, and not that you can't talk to your spouse about it, right? but I think, you know, making your spouse have to deal with the other, with the high conflict ex or making your kids be messengers for you. I think that's no good for anyone. I think right. that just causes problems, and it ultimately causes more problems for the kids in the sure. long run. Sure. Your kids aren't messengers. Your right. kids are your kids. So right. to have your kids work things out with their high with your high-conflict ex because you don't want to deal with them, like you're the parent. Right. You deal with them. Why should your kid have to deal with them and put them in the middle and have your kid have the chance of getting the wrath of the high-conflict bio parent? You know, like that's not their job. Their job is to learn how to be a productive member of society and, you know, be a good human. Their job is not to be your secretary with your ex. But that's what happens is that we put our kids in harm's way because we don't want to deal with their parent. So we make them deal with their parent. And that's emotional burden on kids. That's too much for them. You know, it's it's. It's not good for them. And then they act out and then we're like, why are my why why is my kid acting out? Well, because they're the ones having to deal with something that you should be dealing with. A grown up thing that they didn't ask for nor create, you created. And so I think that it's a good thing to buffer your children and protect your kids and your spouse for the sake of your own blended family. And it just makes it easier on you in an already difficult situation. Amen. Does sister. that make sense? Yeah. Um, so I kind of already dealt like number six is give yourself a choice and have an exit plan. And I kind of talked about this with the boundaries, but you should always have a choice to leave a high conflict situation. I feel like you do, but a, po a lot of people just don't realize that they have the choice. A lot of people feel stuck in it. Like they have to engage and at the end of the day, like, yep. if you just remember you have a choice, like... Yeah, you do not have to take abuse, manipulation, disrespect, hate, gaslighting, shame. Shame's a big one. Shame is something that exes use a lot to control a situation. They shame you. They make you feel ashamed. What about people... Like, I feel like a lot of people deal with this. Like, this is something, mm -hmm. like, they're like, well, my ex is so lack of a better term, powerful. They have like all this, they're mean. Usually it comes from mean. Mm -hmm. They're loud. They're pushy. Yeah. Do you deal with this type of stuff as a, as, as being your blended family coach, being a coach? Mm -hmm. Like, is this something that you help women mm -hmm. work through if they're like, I don't know how to just get on top of this mountain and be me. Sure. Yeah? Because what you allow is what's going to continue. Okay. And the problem with mean people is that they are controlling. They're, they've they learned that I can control the situation or people by being mean, by bullying, by doing all these hurtful, hateful things. Like I can control people. I can make them feel small. I can make them do what I want. I can, you know, they're, I can run them over and get, you know, ultimately what I want because this is what I've learned. And so if you allow that, that's what will continue. You know, so no is a complete sentence. So if someone comes to you and they're like, this is me. I just get mowed over all the time by my high conflict X. Yeah. I need help. How do I get through this? Like, this is something yeah. you could help them with. We transform. We take your power back. Yeah. How you show up, we change. Interesting. We figure out. What is your superpower? What is your superpower? Yeah. All right. So, ladies, yeah. 
if you're interested, Julie can help you. Well, and just because someone's your ex and the parent of your child doesn't mean you have to sit there and take it. Whatever it is. Yeah. You you do have to co-parent, meaning you make decisions. What is co-parenting? Co-parenting is we're making decisions because we both have legal rights to raise these kids up the best way. Well, co-parenting isn't sticking your head in the sand and letting the other parent make all the decisions because you don't want to or Deal because they're it. mean yeah. or be, because of all the reasons. Right. Co-parenting is being like, I have say in this. But I also recognize that you have say in this. I, mm-hmm. I feel like co-parenting, when it comes down to it, it's a it's a common respect. Mutual respect. It's a mutual respect without actually having to respect the other person. You're respecting the role of the other person. That's right. That's whether, right. You, whether you like them or not. Yeah. And so if you can change how you show up, and it, it will change the relationship. How you show up. If you show up differently, the relationship is forced to shift, whether that's in friendship, whether that's at work, in your marriage, with your kids, um, with your ex. When you change, everything around you changes. And so what you allow will continue. So if you don't want to allow it, how you, you don't, unspoken boundaries, I got to go, bye. Every time the conversation starts taking a turn, I got to go, bye, you hang up. Eventually, They're going to understand that they can't shame you or talk about things like you're not going to talk about things that aren't in, you know, yes, no, I'll think about it. Well, I also feel like if someone is extremely high conflict that you have to keep, I got to go by, um, usually the best resort for something like that is putting it in writing. Because if someone realizes that something is in writing and something something can be used against you in the court of law, they are less likely to be as high conflict. And also, if they don't, if they have to wait for a return, such as an email, um, emails seem to be the least amount of high conflict because it does not have, I mean, yeah, I see your face. Not in my case. Sorry. No, but look at, but look at. As far as like a like an instant gratification of yeah I've bullied this person and I'm getting yeah you know what I mean like you can put whatever in there but doesn't mean that has to give a response you have to get a response yeah it do, the response isn't immediate well, so and that's really good advice because uh, very few things require an immediate response but how people bully you and make you feel like I want an answer right now yeah you can say oh, I will think about it and get back to you right bye yep. I will think about it and get back to you. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. You I'm going to start using that. Bye. That's Brooke's thing. Oh. Um, but anyway, I just but use it. It's so good. Okay. Bye. Imagine if I use that. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, <laughs> You do. It's your black, <laughs> your black thumbs up you like to give when you're annoyed. Um, What? I don't, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh. But I, I think it's a good point you made that like not everything requires an immediate response, right? You right. can do you feel like that's good advice? Like you can take control back by not responding right away. You know, you can take control back by I will let you know when I will let you know. I will respond to you when it's a good time for me. These are ways you take your con- you take control back. Just because even that, someone I feel texts like even you, an answer, me personally, I feel like an answer like that is almost conflicting like it's it it can create when it's good for me it sounds like a very well, i'm like don't say that i know but that's what you just said that you say i don't feel like you don't say it like that you'd be like okay i'll give it some thought and i'll get right back to you you know or say you had a text come through in your head you're like i'll get because i feel like when we have a text come through i'm like this i'm like i want to immediately respond and uh, get done with it uh-huh but then it's like I'm bowing, like he, like my ex wants to know something, so they right away I'm gonna jump. Yep, no. Nope. And it's kind of like you've you've actually helped me with this. Like it's okay to get back to something when it's good for you, right? And that's how you take your power back. Yes, you don't you don't respond like, well, when I decide to get back to you, I'll get back to you. But like, or one you that can wait a or while, or one that should be uh should go without saying but people tend to do it would be like well once i talk to blank once i talk to my spouse like let me talk it over with blank and look at you look at you look how excited you are about that oh i this that i get be, all the time but it, so i feel like that is a high conflict response because it's like well i need it's to go it's a fuck you response oh, there it is you guys you made it last week um, you- oh <laughs> dang what's happening it was this one oh 
this one right here. <laughs> yeah, you know, you that's just like, pathetic loser. yeah, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. Maybe that's how I should respond when I get those. I have to check with my wife. Yeah. I have to, ch- like, why don't you just get back to me after you've checked with that's everyone? A, well, like, that's my point. It's like, who cares? Like, you sh- yes, you, you should have to. You have to assert that in a text. But why do you have to put that into the text? Oh, so dude. I feel like it's a conflict thing without... Without it, needing to it's be or really ha- this, <laughs> it's like I have to go check because you're no one and I have someone else now. And like, yes, roll call. We all know the players here. Like, <sighs> go check and go get check. back to me when you have any. It is. It's so annoying. It's like you're. So an I'm idiot. saying. Don't, so I'm saying, don't be the one to do don't that. Like, that. just it's a not a respect <laughs> thing for them, but a respect <laughs> thing for just life. Just. It's just a respect life and don't well, do that. When you have to assert things about like that, it says more about you. That, yes. Okay. Than thank you. I think me. that's what I was getting at. It's like, yeah, it's like, I don't, don't, don't give them answers that they're going to read into and be like, what an idiot. Or like, yeah, I know you're married. Like, I get it. Or it's just it's been many, it's many a, years. We all understand. We Got you. Yeah. You yes. know, it's, yeah. Anyway. Don't say anything until you have something to Unless say. Unless it's about that person, but <laughs> I don't. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, one thing you can do that I do often is helpful when you're dealing with your high conflict ex and say things are out of control and they're just being a shit to you. Okay, it's really a difficult situation. I use as an opportunity for validation. We're not together anymore for a reason. This is not my day-to-day life. (laughs) Like, I start feeling immediately better that I made a good choice for myself and my kids. But really, like, um, and I'm sure, to be fair, my ex has to think the same about me. I'm just putting it out there as well. Like, both ways. Like, I'm sure when, like, we're oil and fire. It's not even oil and water. Who's fire and who's oil? But (laughs) I'm fire. (laughs) Um, but it's just, it's not, we're not, we are explosive, right? So I'm sure we both sit there and like, thank God, this is not my life. And it makes you more grateful for what you have. Right. Do you not agree ever? I agree always. You don't always agree, but do you? Yeah, I'm I'm quite agreeing, agreeing with you. Agreeable? Agreeable. You're quite agreeing with me. I'm quite, (laughs) yes. Yes. I'm yes. I'm yes to that. Yeah, it's just, yes. I mean, it is an opportunity to turn, you know, lemons into lemonade. Like, just be grateful this isn't your everyday life. You don't have to wake up with this person, go to bed with this person, like, talk to this person in person all day, every day. <laughs> There's a lot of persons. There's lots of people. You don't, You know what I mean, though? Yeah. It's it's a way, it's, it's a good way to feel good about things. Okay. Make sure you're in a good headspace, number eight. Make sure you're in a good headspace before you deal with your high conflict ex. So here's the deal. If you're already having a shit day at work and it doesn't have to be dealt with, or you're having a really, you know, you just had a fight with your spouse. Like if you're, have, you know, something happened with your kids and you're just pissed off because you have teenagers and that's really hard. I know nothing about that. <laughs> we know nothing about that. Teenagers are just hard. Um so it's probably not the greatest time to engage with your ex. You know, maybe you decide you're going to respond at a different time or, hey, you know, Niall's not at a good time. I'll call you in an hour or two. Or maybe can we talk tomorrow about this? Because if you're already going to be in a high conflict situation with a high conflict person, um, give yourself the best opportunity for engaging in that in the best possible headspace. It just helps everything out. So... Maybe you go for a walk before or take a nap or watch Hallmark. Well, like we just talked about, like self-care is important. You you don't have to respond immediately. So if you're not in that space, don't respond immediately. And use um, you can use the high conflict situation as a learning tool about in your marriage and with your kids, like how not to behave. Because sometimes when we're when we're engaged with a high conflict person, we become that high conflict person as well. So it's a good to reflect back on like what not to do in your marriage, what not to engage in and and teach your kids how to be better in relationship than that. 
So you, you have a frame of reference of what doesn't work, what is toxic. And so you can use it as an opportunity to learn from and to teach different. Um, and then the last tip is to get a support system. It's really hard when you have to deal with like a, a high bra. Co- no. Oh, gosh. Um, Just. you know, when you're dealing with a high conflict person, some things need to be processed. And sometimes it's hard with your spouse because your spouse probably already hates them or has bad feelings. And so it doesn't make you feel better when they're like, or jokes about everything seriously. Yeah. Like it's not when you need to process or, or have like a, a conversation, it's good to have a support. So whether you have like a friend group, um, other step or not step parents, but other bio parents coaching I feel like the friend group thing is a very it's hard it's a very fine line because there becomes a fine line of support and gossip and falling on either side of that line Mm -hmm. um it's it's a very very thin line so I think someone talking to someone more like a therapist or a coach like you or finding a support group maybe in your church or, or on Facebook where or you on, can, we right. have a Facebook group. If you guys are interested, um, it's free to join. It's blended life, private Facebook group, um, a support group. And you can just go and be like, Hey, do you experience this? I just have to get this off my chest and f- find community. You grow in community. You right. do not grow in isolation. So um, it's really important you get yourself in front of people that can support you, come alongside you, encourage you. Um, those are the 10 tips. Now the bonus. The bonus. I wish I had a song for the bonus. Do it. Let's see. I'm just going to press a random button. Ready? Mm. <laughs> That's not I a good bonus. Not a good bonus <laughs> button. Yeah. Bonus time. Remember to be a leader. Oh. So if you don't like how things are going, it's because you're not leading the situation. So, yeah. And I think that's a great, that's a great one because if you take control of the situation and you lead the situation, you can lead it down an evil path or you can leave it down a great path of. Yeah. Yeah. So decide that you are going to lead this conversation. Decide that you are going to be a leader. You know, decide that you are going to be actually a co-leader with this person, that they aren't going to overrule you. You're not going to succumb. It's not about a power. Someone has power over the other, but you can definitely be a leader. And when you show up as a leader, everything shifts. And the quickest way to get your power back is to become a leader in any situation Gosh, in life. Gosh, you'd make a great life coach. Thanks. <laughs> um... Before that's so you liked my bonus. I like your bonus. I think it's um, it's empowering, right? I think it's empowering. There's not a lot to talk about because it's one of those things that's just like, yes, you know, like yes. If you are the leader, no one else can. No one else can lead you. Like you need to take control of the situation, and it's almost a very obvious one that doesn't need to be talked about anymore. <laughs> All right. So before we go, I want to remind everyone in September, we're going to start. That's like two days from now. You know that, right? I do. But <laughs> okay. we're we're not starting. Oh, you have my phone. The oh, second, it's fine. Um, I'll, I'll post it on our Instagram, but get this book, um, Grace Filled Step Parenting by Lori Short. In September, we're going to start reading two chapters a week. I'm going to go on Facebook Live on Sundays in the afternoon. I'll post the time and discuss each chapter or the two chapters we read each week. The link for Amazon to buy this is in our bio and Instagram also below in this video. So get this book. We're going to talk about it. I'm sure you can glean stuff from Grace Field Step Parenting and apply it to all areas of your life. That's what I love about books like this. Are so we grab t- it. Are we going to tie any of this into the podcast? I'm curious to see what comes out of this. If we can tie some of this into discussions that we have here on the podcast yeah i'm i'm, I'm really yeah interested. and i'm hoping that as we read um i'm hoping Lori comes on in october when we're done so as you're reading gather your questions for her questions are going to come up for you as you're reading this book so write them down and then um we'll give them to her i'll submit as many as we can get in and she'll come on our podcast and answer and talk to you guys and maybe she'll pop on during our Sunday evening chats about the chapters as well. And I haven't I haven't talked to her yet, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to have her 
we're gonna get some signed copies from her, and we're gonna give Are away. We? <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do some some giveaways. So even if you guys have the book, we're gonna get you guys signed yeah. copies. I'm just. I'm, just, that. I'm vouching for oh for gosh. Lori now. Maybe we do it on Blended Life Raw. I think it's a I think it's a Blended Life Raw giveaway. Okay. I think you have to be a part of Blended Life Raw in order to get a free signed copy. Yeah, that. and maybe we have lunch with her if you guys want to come have Ooh. like an in person lunch. Love to I'm meet totally her. like she's down. She's already asked to meet us. Oh really? Uh huh. Why didn't you tell me this? We just have been busy. Oh. We have been able to, but we'll connect. Okay. But maybe we can have an opportunity for you all to come to like a lunch. Um, and we'll pay for it by a couple winners of Raw or something. I don't okay. know. I like it. We'll talk about it. The other thing I want to talk about before we go is w- Eric and I have realized that we need a vacation together. We haven't been away together alone without kids in three years since our honeymoon, actually. Right. So we've been asking for different places. Like, where is your favorite place to vacation in the United States of America? Um and so put in like either below this video, message us on Instagram, whatever. Where's your favorite place to vacation in the US? And what we're gonna do in September, we're going to put all of your suggestions into a container. Do we have a date for it yet? We don't. Okay. Um, but we're gonna draw out and whatever we draw out is where we're going to go. And then on <laughs> Raw, we're going to take you on our vacation with us. This, this could get expensive so quick. I'm so excited. Are you, I bet you, you are. You always tell me that you can make anything happen. <laughs> I, you never worry, I can, so I'm not I'm, worrying. I'm like, great. This is good. So here's the cities we have so far. Okay. Okay. We have Westport, Washington. Okay, that's not too bad. Maui. Okay, that I'm gets expensive. I'm secretly <laughs> hoping it's Maui. We have San Diego. Oh, that's an easy one. We can do that. Nashville. Nashville's I've fun. I've never been to Nashville. I really would love to go. Nashville's interesting. It's uh, There's a lot going on, and it's not as big as you'd think it is. Mm. Um, I, anyways, Nashville's super neat. Alaska. Never been there. You've been there. I've been there a ton. Yeah. I love Alaska. Alaska's so, so fun. So I've just never been to Nashville or Westport, Washington. I've been to Westport. Is it good? Um, I don't really. I, I used to do a lot of like motorcycle stunt shows up there. Is it pretty? It's um, got to be beautiful. It's got to be. I don't. It's I didn't spend. Be. I didn't spend time there. I like. I've. I've just been through there. It's really helpful. So, I don't. Know. So add to our list if you guys have a favorite place you guys like to vacation or somewhere you think that would be fun for us to go for a week. A week. <laughs> She's calling out. A week, ten days, two months. I don't know. <laughs> Like why five to seven l- we'll, nights. Why don't we do, what we'll do is we'll take our podcast there also. Yeah, or or are we going to go to multiple places and like plane hop? Oh. <laughs> what? what fantasy island are I you know. living on? That's a new show. Oh my gosh. I think fantasy island. Oh yeah, I saw, I saw the advertisement I for I thought it. that's what you were saying. No. Oh. Um, it's not what you would think. I don't, yeah, I, I saw anyway, like the previews for it's it. It's was like someone Freaky Friday, the other one. Yeah. Isn't that where like you become <laughs> freaky, opposite freaky. opposite bodies? Okay, I remember. Anyways, <laughs> um, so write in. Let us know where where we should go, and we'll do that live. It'll be fun. We'll do it on air in September. Um, I just want to get a bunch of different suggestions. So please write in in any way, any format. We will, we'll <laughs> we will. add to our list. Yeah. Cool. All, All right. right. Well, thanks guys thank for you guys. showing up. Yeah. Thank you guys for being with us and being part of Blended Life. And like I said at the beginning, like, and I, I truly, I think about it all the time. Like, I'm so, so, so grateful for our Blended Life community. So just thank you guys for being here with us and uh, being a part of this. And we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Bye.